I use the bore gauge to mic all the bores. Don't really know why. I'm gonna bottle brush on it no matter what it says. We'll mic it again after we punch the bore. So here is our subject engine. 1975 Chevrolet small block 350. It is a four bolt main block. And the bores are actually in really good shape. The engine was dirty, but the bearings and the bores are in good shape. These are just a few of the bearings I snagged. Nothing exceptional to see here. They just look like 50 year old bearings. And there's the bores. No real vertical scarring or scoring or markings. Everything looks good. It's just a little too shiny. And these oil rings are absolutely stuck. Very hard to break loose. And that's likely the source of our excessive oil consumption. Excessive, a, a quart per tank. That's, that's pretty good oil burn. And the pistons have seen better days, but they'll run. Well, this one won't run. This is what it's supposed to look like. This is what it looks like after it gets a severe case of gravity and hits a concrete floor. So I have to replace that piston. Otherwise I would reuse all the pistons. This is a budget build and there's no reason to pay for parts that aren't broken. Now they might be worn, but as long as I don't put the micrometer on them and see how worn they are, I won't care. They'll be fine, probably. But back to the subject at hand at home DIY cylinder honing. I got my trusty whiteboard here. It, uh, it's got all the measurements from all of the cylinders on it. Now, I took a bore gauge to all my cylinders. This is from Fowler, it's like a hundred bucks. Uh, you can find cheaper ones, like a $50 bore gauge on Amazon. I'll leave a link for this one. You could use a snap gauge uh, that's probably a quarter of the price, but it takes a lot longer. Neither a snap gauge nor uh, a dial bore gauge like this will give you a measurement without a micrometer to set the anvil. And I have micrometers. I just chose not to use them because I'm gonna reuse the pistons that came out of the engine. I might mic the new piston that I put in, but the other ones will be fine. I'm just gonna put them right back in. Just clean them up, put them in. And if you're doing an at-home honing job, you really need some way to measure the cylinders to make sure you're not wasting your time. 50 to $100, you can have all the instruments you need to measure the bores and all of the bearing clearances on your engine. So I think it's a worthwhile investment. So what you're seeing here is all the measurements from all the cylinders. Now, I used my bore gauge and I zeroed it at the top of the number two cylinder there, there. So all of these numbers are relative to the zeroing of the gauge right there. And every one of these numbers is a measurement of thousandths of an inch. So here it was undersized by a thousandth, uh, 1.5 thousandths. Uh, if you see a positive number, it was larger by half a thou. So that's what all those numbers mean. And if you look at all this, basically every cylinder is within one thousandth of roundness and one thousandth of taper. Now that's a little bit of an exception. It's one and a half thou, but I can live with that. There's nothing wrong with this block. There's no reason it should go to the machine shop. We can do a little rotary rebuild with this bottle brush home, throw a set of new rings in it, and it's ready for smoky burnouts. Let's talk about what we're using. This is a bottle brush home or dingleberry dingle ball home from Flex Home. Uh, this is a four and an eighth inch diameter, which is the right size for our four inch bore, slightly oversized. And this is a 240 grit brush, which gives the appropriate surface finish for the cast iron rings that are going in this engine. If you're using a Molly ring, say on an LS or something newer, that's not the right surface finish for seating in these rings. You need to check and make sure you get the right brush for the ring for your application. And these are all the instructions you get. You have to use a cutting oil to wash away the abrasive and the material you remove. They say, they say use flex on oil or 30 weight oil. I don't have either of those here, so I'm gonna use a transmission fluid. It's a good thin fluid that'll lubricate and help wash away the material, so that's good. It's showing five to 800 RPM for this brush, for that diameter. The smaller the diameter, the higher the RPM will go. And it also says 
60 to 120 strokes per minute to get the 45 degree cross hatch. It also says 20 to 45 seconds will get you where you need to be. Now I think it's important to understand that a brand new brush is probably gonna cut faster than a used warm brush. So take that with a grain of salt, start low, 10 seconds maybe, and see where you're at, and then adjust from there. So my Dewalt on low speed is good for 500 RPMs. So that's what we're gonna go with. I'm also lubing all the cylinders with transmission fluid. It's not gear oil. It's just a good squirt bottle. And after we lube the cylinders, we need to lube up the brush. Get all those balls wet. I can see the comments now. Sorry. I got a hot water. I'm good. All right, now that everything's lubed up, I'm gonna do about 10 seconds on this first cylinder and just see where that gets us. I'm gonna go one Mississippi's or one 1,000's, I don't know. You wanna make sure you get the brush spinning before it goes in the bore. Spinning before it goes in and spinning until after it comes out. You don't wanna get any vertical scratches on the cylinder. All right, so now you all know that I can count to 10. It's actually looking really good already. Really good. I think I'll go ahead and hit it another 10 just to be sure. And then we'll clean it up and see what we've got. All right, so 20 seconds of honing, and you can obviously tell the difference here. Uh, honed, not honed, glazed, very dull. Actually got the right cross hatch in there, I believe, uh, for a 500 RPM and a uh, one stroke per second uh, cadence. Seems to be the right uh, combination. Now I did clean it up and measure it after I ran the hone and hit it with my bore gauge and uh, it didn't move at all. So it'll read down to five tenths or half a thou. Still the same measurement as I started. I did identify a couple of very minor vertical scratches in the cylinder. So I'm probably gonna go ahead and hit it another 10 seconds just to see if I can knock those out. Move those balls. Here we go. I did another 30 seconds on number four bore. Same result, no change in dimension, good cross hatch. So we're gonna lube up all the cylinders of the remaining six and just go ahead and knock those out real quick. All right, we've got all our cylinders honed to uh, machine shop specs. Well, not exactly, but they're good enough. All right, so I did 30 seconds on the first two cylinders and I got the result I wanted. So then I did 30 seconds on all the other cylinders to try and get the same result. Now, remember when we talked earlier about how the brush will lose its effectiveness as it loads up with material and stuff. So you can't just say, well, 30 seconds is what you need for any engine or 50 seconds. So 30 seconds worked great on the first two cylinders, but the brush started losing its effectiveness. So as I got to the last cylinder, I could tell it I wasn't gonna get the finish I wanted. I needed additional time to get the surface finish that I needed. So like we talked about earlier, the brush will lose its effectiveness over time as it loads up with material and stuff. So when I did all the cylinders for 30 seconds, went back and cleaned them up, I found that as I got to the last few cylinders, I just wasn't getting the finish that I was looking for. So what I ended up having to do was going back and adding additional time to all the later cylinders to get them to the same finish as the first cylinder. That's just the way it is. So on the first cylinder, it took 30 seconds. On the last cylinder I got to, it ended up taking closer to a minute. But either way, after about 30 minutes of work, I've got cylinders that have the proper surface finish to seat in a new set of rings that we're gonna put in it. Saved us a lot of time and money from going to a machine shop for a block that really didn't need it.